hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is relaxation, hypnosis for stress, anxiety, and panic attacks. Um, yeah, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And in today's recording, I'm going to talk about intrusive thoughts. Yay, doesn't that sound yummy? (laughs) Intrusive thoughts. And before I start, I'd like to say a big thank you to Ali. Um, So, I'm trying to think. I'll talk a little bit about my intrusive thoughts. And I'll just see what happens. I don't know. I don't always know where the recording is going to go, but which is okay, I think. But it always comes down to the same sentence. With all these recordings, it always comes back to the same sentence. Be kind to yourself. So wherever we start off, in fact, I'd like to start from that, be kind to yourself, but wherever we go, it always comes back down to that line of be kind to yourself. Remember to be kind to yourself. Which is not always very easy. It's not always very easy, but still needs to be done, needs to be remembered, need to, if you can, bring it back to that or else, or else. And I also like to thank everyone for listening to the recordings on this podcast because this is now the pretty much one of the most popular podcasts out of all of the ones I've got. I'm averaging over a thousand downloads a day just on the the you know just on the specific podcast. That's about the other places it's it's uh, at as well. So thank you, and I'm glad that uh, it's, well, hopefully it's useful. Intrusive thoughts. Intrusive thoughts. What are they? Kind of obvious question, or obvious answer to the question, but is it? Maybe it is. You like that big big uh, gap of silence there well I always thought intrusive thoughts this is what I used to think they were is when your mind is telling you do that thing to do something for example we hear in extreme horrible court cases you know you hear that the person says well I'm my I heard voices telling me that I had to do this to do this horrible act that's what I used to th- that's what I used to class as intrusive thoughts so I never used to really think that I had them But I don't hear a voice. I don't have a, hear a voice saying, do this. It's not like it's outside of myself or it's a different person. I don't have that. And that's that could be a, a much, uh, you know, that's that could be a different mental health issue completely. And it's not necessarily intrusive thoughts. It could be, I guess. But I'm going to talk about the kind of intrusive thoughts that I experience. And maybe you can relate to this. And I'm not sure how much I want to share with you. So, (laughs) to be fair, because I'm a little embarrassed about some of the intrusive thoughts that I've had over time. So... 
OCD has been, you know, if you if you look if you look at um, intrusive thoughts, go online, look at the books. It's very much paired up with OCD, as far as the literature, the the books about intrusive thinking, intrusive thoughts. Any idea is you just thinking things that you don't want to think. You know. So it's not like another voice, but it's your, it's you thinking about stuff that you don't want to think about. So it's a split thing, isn't it? It's like if you, it's, and we have that in other situations, though, don't we? You you can be with your, with someone. That. It could be your best friend's partner, and you could be attracted to them. And you know that you can't. Nothing can ever happen. But you're not, you know, you're a human being, and the attraction is a natural chemical reaction to the other person. It's not, not something you can control. You can remove yourself from the situation, of course, and you can also perhaps feel guilty for it. It's guilt doesn't really. I think if it stops you doing anything that's going to harm yourself or your friend, then I suppose guilt could be useful, but I'm not a big fan of guilt. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's overrated. So the idea that we have these thoughts that just come into your mind, we all have them. Everyone has them. So we can't class ourselves as being special because we have them. Because everybody does, just not everybody talks about it. And I saw a sentence, uh, I read a sentence in a book recently, that people are more likely to talk about intrusive thoughts if it's funny. If it's a funny intrusive thought, they may share it. But if it's a horrible intrusive thought, they might not share it. So if they have an intrusive thought that says, push that old lady over. Even though there's no way in the world they would ever do that. It's just a, it's just one of millions of thoughts that we have. But the reason it sticks, the reason, not sticks, but the reason it's memorable is because it's horrible. Because it's disgusting. And it makes us feel horrible. Which is why we notice it more. Possibly. But other intrusive thoughts like, let's throw a bar of chocolate. I want to be a footballer, you know, I want, to be, I want to be a superstar singer. I want to be, imagine myself being able to fly like Superman. I mean, it could be hundreds of thousands of thoughts that are just preposterous. Preposterous? <laughs> Can't say the word. Preposterous. Terus. Something like that. Silly. And I'm not even going to edit that. Edit. I can't speak today. I'm not even going to edit it out. Oh dear. Where are my words? Jason, use your words. Okay. So we have all these uh, thoughts, these which we could class as intrusive, but they don't bother us because they're not harmful. They don't jar us, they don't grab our attention. But the idea of doing something nasty, or either to ourselves or to another person, that's noticeable, that's jarring, that that grabs your attention, naturally. But the idea behind this talk, this lecture, (laughs) this conversation, is that those intrusive thoughts are no different from the ones where all the others the hundreds of thousands that you have 
maybe millions of intrusive thoughts you have and I have they're all the same they're just thoughts meaningless thoughts And I suppose one of the reasons this is, you know, could be important in a sense of stress, anxiety, is because I've had thoughts in the past that I've really, for some reason, held on to. Not wanting to do them but held on to them in a sense of feeling absolutely shitty about myself, really feeling disgusted with myself, beating myself up, sometimes for days on end in the past. Not so much these days. I've even got intrusive thoughts that I remember going back to when I was a kid. An intrusive thought that um, this was a weird one because this was based on something that actually really happened. This lady fell over on the floor outside my school when I was probably about five or six. Fell flat down on her face. I was one side of the fence, she was the other side of the fence. And for some reason, I told myself that I did that, I caused that. I caused her to fall down on her face. I mean, you know, realistically we know that's not possible. And if I had, if I had magic powers or some kind of superpowers that I could cause things to happen, then I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been standing in a schoolyard I wouldn't have been at school I'd have been in a mountain of chocolate eating constantly chocolate surrounded by all my favourite television characters performing for me you know that's if I had those kind of powers to make anything happen I wouldn't make a middle aged woman fall over on her face but I really believed that I'd done that. So that's one of those intrusive thoughts that was a bit different because it was after the fact, after, but it was instantly after. Well, it's almost at the same time. As she was falling, I was believing that I was causing her to fall. Very, very unusual. Another time, I was, I won't go into details, but there was a person and I actually had a knife and something inside me said, stab him. But it wasn't, it wasn't like a voice, but just like I wanted to just, I thought about just stabbing this person. And this is when I was 13 probably 14 it sickened me it sickened me it still kind of sickens me um, because I remember it I remember it so vividly and I didn't understand why would I think about doing something like that I didn't do it I mean you know I say that I mean no way of people knowing is there but I didn't honestly I didn't do anything like that but I felt like I had I don't think I could have felt more guilty even if I had actually done it I was on a, if I'd have gone I, I think at one point I wanted to go to the police station and hand myself in then my, my brain sort of like well, what are you going to hand yourself in for because you had a thought you can't hand yourself in for something you haven't done but then I was worried what if I do do it what if it happens again so 
So that was a very... That's something that I kept inside. And I'm not sure if I've ever told... Maybe told one or two people in my entire life. Maybe one person. Which would be probably my therapist. I don't think I've ever said it on a recording but maybe I have I mean I lose track of what I talk about but genuinely this is someone that I cared about I would never do it never no way in the world would I have I wouldn't do it to anyone not that age you know unless it was self defence but outside of that no but I just absolutely couldn't believe it I was like what I felt like my brain there's something wrong with me I felt I really felt that I maybe I was possessed like the devil had taken over my head you know and that could be that could be the downside of living with Catholic nuns for a couple of years is uh, if you're that sort of ingrained in religion sometimes that stuff can kind of seep in a little bit sort of when you try and make sense of stuff I mean I might end up trying to make sense of it in a uh, in a Catholic way like it must be the devil must have been possessed Um, or any other religion it could be a similar thing so perhaps that's where I was coming from with that but I wasn't possessed I'm pretty sure I wasn't but I felt awful and there was no one I could talk to about it I mean there's a chance I don't know if I'd have gone to someone I might have ended up getting taken away by social services or I don't know, even sectioned, who knows? If I'm kind of was having those kind of thoughts. But it was only like a one off at that extreme. And it was awful, and it's. It almost followed me around. I've never really forgiven myself for it, which is. Unhealthy, actually. Imagine not forgiving myself for a thought. Not for an act. But just for a thought. One out of millions and millions and millions of thoughts that I've had in the last 49 years. It must be millions. It's got to be, mustn't it? And I rarely act on my thoughts. But sometimes I do. That's what I worry about. um, Intrusive thoughts. Because. I don't know if I've mentioned this. I had a. I kept thinking about destroying my book collection. And eventually I did destroy my book collection. I spent two days. Ripping the books up. By hand. Blood all over my hands. Blisters. Cuts. Everything. And I was in some kind of ecstatic bipolar frenzy or something. I don't know. And, you know, I really regret it. It was my life's book collections. So it was hundreds and hundreds of books. But I had thought about doing it previous to that. So that's that started got got me thinking. Oh no! So if I have, if I think about something, maybe I will do it. But actually, that was I think that was a different scenario. Different kind of. So that wouldn't be very helpful to, <laughs> if I'm doing a recording saying, "Don't worry about uh, intrusive thoughts," because. You know, we never we never carried them out anyway, and I'm just talking about one that I did carry out, but that wasn't harmful to anyone else. It was harmful to me only emotionally, 
me physically to my hands but that they healed up over a week or so but that was more due to my mental state at the time I had a friend that said to me years ago he used to work on the trains at night he used to work on the train tracks on the underground in London London and he he actually thought about just stepping on the live track the wonder would just basically turn him to dust instantly like, like a million volts or whatever and he didn't know why he just thought oh maybe I'll do that but he didn't and he's still alive well he wouldn't have been alive if he'd done that there's no way he'd he'd have been uh, well to be fair I wouldn't be mentioning it because I would never have known that he'd thought about doing it it's only because I was living with him that he said I had this weird thought earlier about just putting my foot on this live track rail track I don't know why it's a a long time ago so I think instead of being compassionate or caring or even interested I think I just said "Um, can you just please pass the joint or can you shut up I'm watching telly or something so I wasn't much wasn't much use to him back then it's a long time ago it was like 95 1995 yeah but we all have intrusive thoughts and I think the point behind this was originally when I first started making a recording back in 22 minutes ago is that they don't really mean much they're just thoughts and the only reason the horrible ones stand out is because they're horrible I'm sure there's people in the zoo. Some people have a thought of like, oh, I want to be like, I'll climb over the over the over the gate into the lion den. Wonder what that would be like. Well, I thought you all kind of know what that would be like. There's videos on YouTube for that, but most people wouldn't do it, and most people and those that do do it. I pretty much can guarantee they're not just wandering around enjoying the zoo with their family and suddenly think oh I think I'll climb into the pit of lions I'd imagine most of the people it is imagine I mean I can't say this for sure uh, every single one of the people that have done that were ill you'd have to be ill to do that or you've never either that or you didn't know what what a lion was I mean perhaps someone's at the zoo and see this big lion thinking oh it looks so cuddly I've never seen one of them before I want to cuddle it probably not so the person's possibly well I'd say 100% very unwell at that time and more than likely went to the zoo to do that. Didn't just happen across a couple of lions and think, oh, if it'll have a chat. Because it's interesting, is it? You know, if that was the case, that people well people and people would generally follow what the intrusive thoughts then wouldn't the penguin area be full of people full of kids wouldn't everyone want to get in with the monkeys
Let's face it, who, who wouldn't want to get in play with the, peng with the penguins? But no one does. So that's an intrusive thought, which is funny. The idea, oh, I'll get in play with the penguins. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Even a child would see that as being silly. So maybe going back to that, be kind to yourself. Perhaps with intrusive thinking, intrusive thoughts, we can perhaps be a bit we, I'm including myself, a bit more gentle. Maybe try and have a sense of humour about it as well. Because you know, you know yourself, you know that you're a decent person, you know that you've got a huge amount of kindness inside you. And thinking something does not make it so. A thought doesn't make it an action. An action makes it an action. I can think of picking that water bottle up that's over there. Very different from actually picking it up. It's Andre's on the floor. I could, I could just stamp on his head. Think about it. I'd never do it. But besides, he'd beat me up if I tried. But that, that thought is the most disgusting thought I could come up with. That's the most disgusting thing that I could imagine ever doing. Hurting my little boy, Andre, the ferret. And it feels horrible to say it. But it's not real. It's not real, it's just a thought. It's no more real than flying into the sky with my magic slippers. No more real than me being crowned the heavyweight champion of the world, boxing champion. It's never going to happen. It's, rid it's ridiculous. It's not going to happen. I'm never going to miss, I'm never going to win the Miss World competition or the Mr. Olympia. But I can imagine doing it. Why don't you become a bodybuilder? Yeah. You think about it, if he's in a wheelchair, and, and you might be, and you've got the thought saying, why don't I, why don't I uh, run up that hill? You might have the thought, because perhaps in the past you weren't in a wheelchair, and you dismiss it, it might be, it might be an uncomfortable thought, like, it might be like, oh great, thanks for reminding me I'm in a wheelchair, which is what I've kind of just done right now as well, but that wasn't my intention. But you dismiss it straight away. I know that I can't jump over a wall. I've got proper lower back issues these days. And there's things I can't do. I can't do Taekwondo anymore because I can't do the kicks. Not without hurting myself. So I had to stop. I can still punch, but I can't kick. And nothing I can do is going to make that change. Maybe a lower back replacement, hip replacement, I don't know. I'm never going to win the Olympic gold in Taekwondo. Ain't going to happen. No matter how much I think, if I train, I'd, I'd join the Olympics, I'd get in the Olympic team for Great Britain. No. Just like I'm not going to shoot someone either. I'm not going to hurt anybody. I'm not going to hurt myself. It's the same category. It's just some things stick because they're disturbing. And I've had, I think with, um, let's say, there's different kinds of intrusive thoughts and someone that's suicidal has intrusive thoughts and some people do. Some people have followed those thoughts and through to action. You know, can't, we can't deny that. 
And if there is anyone listening to this, please, please, please seek help. Just being kind to yourself is not enough. It's something that you need to do, but you need to seek professional help. And be kind to yourself, of course, and that is being kind to yourself. Get help. Don't, don't, you don't have to deal with it on your own. There are lots of people out there that will listen to you. Might be a neighbour, might be a friend. You know, the worst, well not worst case scenario, but if you, anybody that can't get hold of the mental health team or doesn't know where to go, go to the hospital, to the emergency ward of the hospital and just tell them what you want to do and they will keep you there and they will get someone to speak to you and to talk to you, to listen to you, a doctor, maybe someone else. So I thought I'd just add that. I know this recording isn't about that subject. But I think it would be remiss to completely ignore the the fact that some people do have invasive thoughts during severe depression and sometimes they do follow through. I had intrusive thoughts when I was depressed in the past. There was one time I used to go to work and all I wanted was someone to shoot me in the head. I know it sounds absolutely bonkers, you know, I really, you know, just sounds ridiculous. I hated the job so much. I was so low. I'd be walking and I could hardly move my body. Stressed, so stressed, so anxious of like even stepping foot into that building. And I wanted someone just to walk behind me and shoot me in the head. And I was hoping for it. I literally was hoping. Of course it wasn't going to happen. But that was... I guess that was beyond intrusive thinking. That was holding on to a thought. That was wishing for something. And it feels horrible to think that I have been like that. And other times, you know, different things. But intrusive thinking, intrusive thoughts only have the power that we allow them to. That's the thing. I only have the power that you give them. Because you could say, well, if you're going to give that intrusive thought your attention, then isn't it fair to give all of them your attention? Which means you can never do anything because you're going to spend the rest of your life just focusing on your bombardment of thousands and thousands and thousands of thoughts every day, you'd never be able to get anything done. And most of it is absolute dribble as well. It's just stuff like clouds in the sky going by. I mean, it's the equivalent of Walker running around with a bucket when it's raining, trying to catch every individual raindrop. You can't do it. Well, you can try to do it, but you, you ain't going to succeed. You know, the idea not one raindrop can hit the ground in the garden area. Okay, good luck with that. See how you get on. Eventually, you're just going to chuck the bucket on the floor and come back inside, watch telly, realising that it was pointless. So, intrusive thoughts, really what I was aiming at with this recording is... Not let, don't let them 
affect you in the way that maybe you have. And perhaps don't take them as seriously as they seem to want to be taken. Because they're just thoughts. You know, it's like when you watch a movie. It's not real. It's just a movie. I know some people like to watch movies and get really into the emotions of it. I don't really do that, to be fair. Sometimes. Uh, I remember when I went to see E.T. when I was about 10 or 8, or I don't know, whatever year it was, 1980, wasn't it? 10. And I was determined not to cry because I heard that everyone was crying when they were watching it. Everyone at school that had seen it already said, oh, we cried. I said, I'm not going to cry. I'm a boy. I don't cry. And I, I did. I cried. I'm not sure if that has any relevance to anything. My story about E.T. I guess I just wanted to tell someone about my st- about going to see E.T., showing off a little bit of a outdated story really but I did have those intrusive thoughts saying you shouldn't cry you shouldn't cry you're a boy you shouldn't cry it's wrong to cry so I wonder what intrusive thoughts you have because it don't have to be really horrible to have a, a negative effect on our lives. It doesn't have to be like really grim, disgusting things like perhaps a couple of things that I mentioned from my life. But is it useful? Are those intrusive thoughts useful? And how seriously do we have to take them? Because if you take that one seriously, what makes you not take the other seriously? And if you ignore 99.9.9.9.9% of the thoughts, the intrusive thoughts, why would you take these ones seriously when you know that they're just thoughts? You know, when you add logic, I know logic in emotion don't really uh, fit together very well so it sometimes takes a bit more than logic or a few different versions of logic and a bit of thinking and a little bit of emotion behind it as well I mean, if you had someone that you care about telling you that they had a a thought of doing something and they felt really bad and they felt really awful about themselves because they had this thought of pushing someone over for example what would you say to them? would you say yeah that's a good idea probably not would you laugh at them? it's possible is it possible that in the past I would have laughed and depending on who said it you know some people have a really comedy delivery even when they're saying something serious so I do sometimes laugh when people tell me something because of their delivery not because of the content I had had that once with a client when I was counselling I didn't laugh but I laughed inside and I had to stop myself laughing because it was really serious but his delivery was better than a stand up comedian I was just like wow it was almost like he was telling a joke but he was talking about his own life I couldn't believe it it was like wow I was very confused It's like getting the giggles at a funeral. It's like you know you can't laugh. So you have to wait and hope that during the, is it the eulogy? 
that someone gets up and says a, tells you a funny story or even mildly funny so you can just laugh hysterically and let it all out and people can look at you but at least all they can judge you is maybe over laughing but you're not actually laughing during the, the service even though it's not funny you just maybe got the giggles I've had, we all get the giggles sometimes don't we bit annoying when it's during a job interview it doesn't quite work so I actually got the giggles years years ago with a client it was a young lad and I don't know what it was he was funny and he said something to me or I said something to him and he laughed and, I, and he said something to me I laughed and uh, we kept laughing. We both got the giggles, so we had to end the end the session. Very unprofessional, but there was no way, nothing else we could do because we were both laughing. He was making me laugh, and I was making him laugh, or we were just laughing anyway. So I'm guessing he felt better at the end of that session than he did at the beginning so it kind of had laughter therapy without realising it but from my side I was like oh goodness that shouldn't have gone that way so intrusive thoughts we always have them don't we you could say it's just a thought Aren't all thoughts a bit intrusive? In a sense of, isn't that a bit, a bit being a bit picky? I only like the nice thoughts. I'm only going to be, I'm only going to be accepting of the nice thoughts. I'm only going to like my child when my child is being nice. I'm only going to appreciate being alive when it's nice weather outside. It's very limited thinking, isn't it? It's very limiting ourselves. I'm only going to appreciate the good, th the good ideas that I have. Which means we start. If you do that, if you're a creative person, and uh, which everyone is, and if you have a creative job or creative hobby, the idea that every single picture you paint has to be perfect otherwise there's no point in even starting it every drawing every sculpture every poem every book you write has to be perfect first draft otherwise there's no point starting it and the only ideas the only ideas are the good ideas we don't want any crappy ideas no rubbish ideas just perfectly brilliant ideas you'd stop having ideas you're basically sent, telling your mind that you don't want 99% of your ideas <clears throat> because even with um, comedians I say 99 but let's say for a comedian thinking of jokes probably I'd be generous to like the best comedians perhaps 20% of their ideas are usable from thinking about it to actually then changing it changing it again changing it again adding this you know manipulating the words but from its very beginning how many of those ideas actually could be used on stage as a one liner I'd say possibly 1%, maybe a little bit more. So if you put in your brain, I'm only, I, only want, I only want those perfect ones, your brain will stop giving you stuff that you can then create into something more.
So if we say, or we say to ourselves, well, we don't want any intrusive thinking, intrusive thoughts, then you say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to be creative anymore. I don't want to, like you don't want your imagination to work anymore. I no longer want to have an original idea. I no longer want to think about, fantasize about a holiday that I'm going to have or plan to have in the future. I no longer want to imagine my child growing up and leaving home and going to university or taking, taking my daughter for her first driving lessons, you know, whatever it could be. No, no. Do we really want to get rid of all that? The creative side of our brain, the imagination. Because that's the only way to get rid of any kind of intrusive thinking, which everybody has constantly. It just would give more importance to the unpleasant ones, even though they're as meaningless as the pleasant ones. or silly ones. Imagine if I grew a giraffe neck. I couldn't have that intrusive thought. Imagine if while I'm watching this television show, I my I don't know, my hands turn into antlers. I can think that. Am I going to grasp onto it and really give it much thought? Probably not. So if I'm thinking here, sitting there watching telly, thinking something ridiculous, like I want to set fire to that punch bag. I don't want to do that. Or imagine doing it. You can imagine anything. I mean, you think... Imagine if you was Agatha Christie. It'd mean you've been dead for a long time, but other than that, if you were Agatha Christie or Stephen King, those people that spent they spent their careers thinking up horrible scenarios. Stephen King more so. Disgusting, disturbing, um, gruesome ideas so basically Stephen King is his intrusive thoughts on paper expanded using creativity so if there was no intrusive thoughts we wouldn't have Stephen King we wouldn't have those books which I'd actually be fine with but you know it's loved by millions I've not really ever watched... I've watched the films, I've not read the books. We have no books. There's no intrusive thinking, no intrusive thoughts. We have no books, we have no television, no radio shows, no comedy, no music. People wouldn't ask each other out, probably. There'd be... Perhaps the whole world would just become extinct. Because... How would there be any action without thought to start with? So even the... So maybe we need to get rid of the word intrusive and just have them as thoughts. Thoughts. Is it useful? Useful thoughts, unuseful thoughts. Nice thoughts, silly thoughts, you can label them. Creative thoughts, sexy thoughts, funny thoughts. So perhaps some of this wording that's used is not very helpful. I can see why it's used. Because, as I said, when I was I said at the beginning, when I thought of intrusive th- thoughts, I thought of 
really extreme situations um, when someone's hearing voices telling them to do something absolutely disgustingly horrible but everybody has intrusive thoughts everybody has thinking thoughts that doesn't fit in with who they are but why wouldn't we look look at what we're around look at what we see on the telly what we read in the newspapers what we see on the internet on social media all the movies we've watched, all the television programmes we've watched, all the stories we've heard, other people, are, how they act and what they say, what we see on the news. Of course we're going to have thoughts that are not always positive. I mean, Andre's just run over, gone to the toilet on the carpet, completely ignored the paper, my intrusive thought is to yell at him. <laughs> but he looks so cute, so I won't. So, I don't know if this is of any use at all. Maybe rewording, realising that thoughts are thoughts. It's just a thought. On the paper, mate. Sorry, I'm talking to Andre. I really shouldn't do that when I'm talking and I'm doing a recording, but... Oh. So, yeah, maybe thoughts are just thoughts. Just an idea. It's just a thought. Let me know what you think. And my next recording, I'm probably going to do a relaxation session, which is <laughs> possibly good news to some people. Like, Why do you keep going on talking about stuff? Just do a relaxation session. I hope some of these are, are useful, just because to think about something in a different way can change the way you think about it and the way you feel about it. And realising that you're not alone. You're not the only one that has what, you know, we have these thoughts. They're not always uh, very helpful or nice. And I know it's not always, I don't always like people to say, yeah, we're all in the same boat. And, you know, there's a part of me that likes to think, well, I'm unique. I would be like other people. But we are all unique, but we are also like other people as well. We all are similar to each other, yet very different. We all have similarities because we're human. And especially in a society, raised in a specific society that you're in, we all generally sort of fought are forced to live by those societal rules from a very early age. So our thinking is affected by that. I mean, in some parts of the world, they don't even acknowledge mental illness. Which is a little bit scary. So, you know, the world isn't, hasn't come together with this stuff. You know, some places they don't think it is. They think, oh, this is, the person's possessed. Someone's got schizophrenia or Tourette's, for example. I know it's not a mental illness, it's a neurological disorder, but they'll think, oh, they've got Tourette's. Or, that you know, if someone's got someone's having an epileptic fit um, they're p 
possessed by the devil been taken over by a, a demon or so you know and I can understand where they're coming from in the sense that it does look a bit like you know the exorcist movie when someone's having a seizure just in a sense of being out of control of their own body and and it's awful but that's where you know having not intelligence but I suppose because uh, <laughs> I shouldn't say intelligence but having knowledge a bit of education helps I think so maybe we can use that education for ourselves to realise that we're okay we are okay doesn't mean that there's no illness doesn't mean doesn't mean that I don't have bipolar but I'm okay it's okay to not be okay I think is the title of a book that I've not I've not read <laughs> it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to have thoughts because that's all they are is thoughts they can only control you if, well they can't control you even if you let them they still can't control you because you're the one doing the controlling Because if we sort of say, okay, I've got this thought, therefore I'm going to follow it through because I'm, it's controlling me. I'm lying to myself. I'm just using it as an excuse to do that thing. Can't control me. Nothing can control us. Nothing can control us. We are in control of what we do. And some people, they really like to argue with us. Like, no, I don't. I can't. When I see red, I see red. And I, I can't help it. I have to punch people. Okay, so why didn't you punch the policeman? Why didn't you attack the doorman? How come you were t you went for the, the, the skinniest, weakest looking person that you could find and went to beat them up? Because you can control yourself. People can. They make out they can't, but they can. They lie to themselves. And I'm not talking about people that are just so out of it that they don't know what they're doing. But just generally, we all can control ourselves. And it's not about controlling, but we've all we all can be aware of what we're doing yeah <laughs> that might not be true but I like to think it is so that's the end of this session and as ever remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy and being kind to yourself in this situation is remembering it's just a thought just a thought the only meaning it has is the meaning you give it just like anything else in your life the only meaning anything has is the meaning that you give it it's the only meaning it has to you I have a different meaning to another person so I went to my, what, my brother's wedding the meaning to that was just the most wonderful day of his life most beautiful day of his life and something to remember forever marrying the, the love of his life for me it was free food and free alcohol different meanings anyway I'm going to go thank you for listening and do do be kind to yourself gen, genuinely it's really important not just uh, it's easy to say in these times it's difficult you know 
anyone with anxiety, stress, bipolar, any kind of mental disorder, OCD, anorexia, whatever it might be. It's difficult all year round. It's difficult whether there's a pandemic or not. You know, it's, it's, it's a challenge to have a mental illness or mental health issue. Whatever, however you want to word it especially a lifelong one um, such as bipolar uh, which unfortunately just doesn't go away it's, it's with you it's like a well, it's like a boil on the bum honestly follows you around so be kind to yourself uh, but maybe give yourself a, a little bit extra love a little bit extra love at the moment. So take care, and I will speak to you next time, which will probably be tomorrow. Lots of love. Bye.